Today, Barnstable remembers the life of President John F. Kennedy on the 50th anniversary of his assassination on this special edition of Barnstable Today. It's November 22nd, 2013. I'm Sarah Mannell. A day goes by in my office in Washington, uh, do I not think of uh, President Kennedy because I had the honor of actually uh, having his physical office that he had when he was a U.S. Congressman. Uh, I recall today, 30, over 30 years ago, when I uh, had the chance to meet and talk with his mother, I hung back when other people were there. She gave me a tour of the ambassador's home. There's two things I want to mention. Above the door was a letter talking about President Kennedy uh, and all he had done for his country. That was placed there uh, and signed by Richard Nixon, of all people. But inside, and it's an important thing to remember today, uh, on the piano, there were three silver frame pictures. Uh, three sons of Rose Kennedy, Joseph Kennedy, who lost their lives for the service of their country. Not many mothers have given so much in sacrifice of their children. Today we honor President Kennedy and in Cape Cod where it was transformative when he was here, the memorabilia, the memories, mass military renovation as it was called at the time, having a place where his cabinet would be as he summered here that still remains. The chimney remains from where uh, his wife was getting medical, medical care at a point in time in her life, right on that reservation. And right here uh, in Barnstable, in Hyannis, in Hyannis Port, we, we pay special tribute to the memory of someone who changed all of our lives and moved our country forward. I think that JFK still inspires hope in me. 
hope for the country, the direction that we're going, and proves that our democracy is the greatest form of government. It allows us to have goodness, it allows us to have truth, it allows us to have beauty. And when I come here today, it reaffirms that bright man, what he did for our country and for all its people in an enduring way, not just for a thousand well, first days. First of all, we wanted to be solemn and very respectful of the event that was a very tragic event that took place. But I think for Bonsal, where we look at the president not only as the leader of the free world when, when he was in office uh, prior to the assassination, of course, uh, but as a friend and a neighbor. So we have memories of him both as a leader and as someone that you know, grew up here and summered here. And this memorial has stood since 1966, just dedicated uh, to President Kennedy. It means a lot to those of us who come and reflect. And, you know, you look at the, the wishing well that, that's here that people throw money into that uh, does money for the sailing program, the scholarship. So it's, um, you pause, and I think what's hard for many of the folks that were here today is that they remember that day. You remember the feelings of that day, and, and you think they're not there anymore, and then all of a sudden they come rushing back because it was just, it was such a loss of innocence and such a, you just couldn't conceive that that had happened to our president. And even though there have been assassinations in the past, you thought that was a thing of the past. And so, but overall for this, I think the fact that our, you know, police and fire and, and local officials were here, along with many citizens, uh, really shows the respect we have for President Kennedy here in this town. Well, I think it's a connection to the community. The Kennedy family had, had a long history with the Hyannis Fire Department, including the president. Um, whenever he landed uh, and came to Hyannis Port, the fire department was there to greet him. At the time, it was Chief Clough. And so we have some very historical photos and historical memories in the department of the Kennedy family and the Hyannis Fire Department. So uh, it's an honor to maintain that close relationship. This is, an, uh, as it, all of us, this is a, a day uh, where we remember, sadly, uh, a person that inspired a whole generation and continues to. And I think that's the important part. I was part of that even as a young boy. Uh, I understood uh, that he was an Irish Catholic that was able to uh, be our first president. Uh, a wall that had been there. Uh, that was uh, something in my family that uh, had a great emotional uh, impact to it. Uh, he was a person that had a bond to Massachusetts, obviously. It's a person that had a huge bond to Cape Cod. And, and I just remember coming here vacationing uh, as a young boy. And we were here at a time when he was here uh, with the summer White House. And this distant person that we would see on television, we felt so close uh, and you could see it in in the Cape at the time with all the memorabilia that sprung and is still here uh, you could see it uh, in the pride people had uh, and they felt that the government was close they felt the personal contact uh, and we still do those of us uh, that are from that generation uh, and so today should be a day of hope uh, not just somber rem remembrance. It should be hope. He brought us hope. He inspired a generation. He continues to do that. And we will, uh, we have to, as uh, the metaphor he often used, we have to take that torch, uh, work hard, and make sure we pass that on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Overcast skies, a chilling wind, made this a typical November day on the Cape. Highness Port huddled in the lee of Nantucket Sound. Ten days before, President John F. Kennedy had departed from here, flown out of nearby Otis Air Base aboard Air Force One. The presidential itinerary returning him to Washington, D.C., then a brief trip to Texas, and finally back to the Cape, where the large Kennedy family would celebrate Thanksgiving Day. Instead, Shortly after 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on a Friday, 
the nation was plunged into mourning. Outside the celebrated Kennedy compound of homes, people started to congregate. They came in ones and twos, talking in low tones, asking each other, where were you when you heard the news? A question is quickly answered today, as five decades ago, by those stunned by the bulletins from Dallas. First word from inside Ambassador Joe Kennedy's cottage came from Frank Saunders, the chauffeur. One of the maids with the cleaning lady had been watching television in the kitchen while on lunch break. The announcement from Dallas momentarily paralyzed her. She stared at the screen, not fully comprehending. After that, another news flash. She got up to seek Anne Gargan, the elder Kennedy's niece. Anne quickly sought Rose Kennedy, the 73-year-old family matriarch. The blow paled her. The two watched downstairs television set wordlessly. After a few moments, Rose whispered instructions to Anne. Keep all the radios and television sets turned off, or at least at minimum volume. Her husband, victim of a near-fatal stroke two years ago, was napping. Someone should disconnect the television in his room without disturbing him. Time enough to tell him when other members of the family arrived. By nightfall, Ted and his sister Eunice arrived at Barnes Municipal Airport in Hyannis. When they reached the main house, a decision had been made. Rose Kennedy asked that her husband be given another night's peace before hearing of the death of his son. And so, early Saturday morning, the burden fell on Edward, youngest of the nine children, to tell his father that the family dream he cherished all these years was shattered on a Dallas Boulevard. He climbed the stairs slowly, braced himself outside the door, and then went in. In the seclusion of the bedroom, father and son sat together, heads bowed in the most private conversation. For the old man, there was little he could do. The stroke had left him speechless, the one's tall, erect frame, immobile. But the eyes, those eyes that a witness fortunes made, gave evidence of the painful loss. Tears fell as he listened. Then his head lowered. Ted reached out, held him gently. A touching tribute of a life taken too soon. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.